Hey everyone, I'm back and today we're going to be talking about live free or die hard. And before I get started, I'm going to mention that I'm talking about the unrated cut because that's the one I saw. And I'm just going to quickly go over the story. It's going to take less than a minute. It's basically like the first movie again, but different. Just like the rest of the sequels have been. I haven't seen five yet, so I can't say quite yet, but... Uh, two and three are just like the first movie, but different, uh, along with this movie. And is this movie good? I'll give this movie credit. It's better than Die Hard 2, Die Harder. Would I say it's better than, or at least on par with one and three? No, not in my opinion. It's not as boring as the second movie. There are certain elements I feel as though the second movie probably did better than this movie, but I find this movie more entertaining than the second movie. And let's get into why. And my main reason as to why I think this movie is better than Die Hard 2 is because I feel as though the action was a lot more fun to watch. I think the stunts in this movie are really good. And I found uh, the action uh, a lot more memorable than the second movie. There are things that I can remember and I enjoyed the violence in this movie. Even though this movie gets uh, really stupid at times and I kind of criticize this movie for being stupid, it's at the very least more memorable than the second movie. And the second movie was a lot more consistent. I'll give that uh, movie a little bit of credit for being consistent in what, in what it was trying to do. I'm, I'm not saying it, I think it's good. I'm just saying that the second movie was at least consistent. This one movie is a little inconsistent because there are some parts that are pretty good, some parts that are not so great. And there's an action scene uh, taking place uh, with John McClane driving a truck and, uh, and he's up against a uh, fighter jet and it's just shooting at him. Uh, there was some CG that looked really bad. I'm going to talk about Bruce Willis really quickly. I think he was good in this movie. At first, I felt as though he was kind of underperforming, but uh, as soon as I realized that uh, the first scene in the movie takes place at 3 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> then it kind of made it more forgivable because it makes sense that this character is probably tired, and John McClane does not get any sleep throughout the entire movie, or at least uh, from what we're shown. The movie takes place over a couple days, and John McClane does not get one minute to sleep. And he's always awake. He's always working. And in that context, I can kind of forgive uh, some uh, moments where he's kind of underacting. Uh, because he's... It makes sense because this character is tired. Uh, the rest of the performances were fine. Justin Long, he was fine in it. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, she was fine. She doesn't have a lot to do. She just uh, kind of hangs around in a few scenes. And that's about it. The villain of this movie, he was fine. He wasn't terrible, but he never intimidated me. I thought he was just serviceable. He was better than Die Hard 2's villain. He wasn't just stupid to me. And I kind of want to get into the story a little bit without spoiling anything. What it's revealed to be is really stupid. I just... <sighs> the worst part of the movie probably for me is the story. And I just... I was taken out of it uh, because of the absurdity of how far it went. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. The third movie is ridiculous, but it's cheesy in a way that I, that I kind of like. This movie kind of goes too far and it just becomes stupid. Going back to the action scenes really quickly, they weren't as well shot as uh, one or three. It was better than two, but that's not saying a whole lot. So in the end, Live Free or Die Hard, it's fine. I think it's better than Die Hard 2, Die Harder, but not as good as 1 or 3. I think uh, where this movie kind of falls flat for me is uh, the writing and how the action scenes were handled. And if this movie had a better story, I think I would have been on board with it more. Or it uh, just embraced how stupid it was instead of taking itself so seriously. I think I would have enjoyed it more. And... Uh, Three uh, really embraces how stupid it is and just goes along with it. The first one is uh, it knows what it is and goes along with it and it doesn't uh, become too stupid because of it. And this one doesn't really know what it is. It has some action scenes that are kind of fun. There's uh, some memorable moments. There's some funny lines in it. But unfortunately, that's about all it has. 
And with all that being said, I'm going to give Live Free or Die Hard a 5 out of 10. So those are my thoughts on Live Free or Die Hard. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to leave a like and comment down below what you thought of Live Free or Die Hard down below. And my social media links, they will all be in the description down below, so follow me there. And last but not least, subscribe to be a part of Foley Nation, and I'll see you when I get my next review up. And that's going to be for Batman Returns. Not these other three, I've reviewed the first one already. So look forward to that, but until I get that up, thank you for watching and have a great day.